morning. What a great day. We have Reverend Ron with us today, right? Oh my gosh. Um, oh, and our little, uh, is this a band? No. Our group, our group. Anyway, let's everybody stand and let's do our song. Hit it, Nat. Imagine if a man took a wing, nothing is impossible. People laugh, it can't be done. Man's not meant to fly. Their little dream changed everything. They dare to touch the is whatever we're here for and everybody may be here for something different and that's okay right so i'm going to have everybody close their eyes for just a second and i want you to think of something that you may think is not possible but that you want to have happen because we just sang nothing's impossible we have a minister here that's going to be talking on the law of attraction and how we can achieve those things. And we have statements of faith that we will be saying shortly. We are able to achieve anything we have. We live here at Unity Center and all Unity Centers through the living and speaking teachings of Jesus Christ. Uh, and we are here to gather and minister to ourselves and to others here in the center as well as virtually with those beliefs. So if you would open your eyes and join me in our statement of faith. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God, the good omnipotence. And our affirmation, we want to speak as if we do believe this, right? Because we do. Thank you, God, that we have come to this place to release the past, celebrate the present, and embrace the future in love, peace, harmony, and prosperity. And our congregational affirmation. We at the Unity Center are a loving, diverse, inclusive, spiritual community 
who come together to demonstrate and live the teachings of Jesus Christ by listening, learning, and empowering ourselves and others. And of course, I didn't grab my big marker, so we're going to punt here with prayer requests. And so do we have what we pray here? There's we we have a probably about a five-fold prayer ministry here at Unity for those who don't know. One is our prayer box where you can anonymously or not so anonymously put your prayers in the box, fold them up. They, we pray over them for nine, or excuse me, for 30 days here at the center. And then they go to the uni center for another 30 days. We have open prayer here. We have a prayer chaplain that at 930, anybody's welcome to join the chaplain in the library, our original library, um, and join in the same unity teachings and prayers that they do on Thursday morning after the book club at 11 o'clock. So, and then also after service, I'll be over in the corner as the prayer chaplain for the day to pray with anyone who would like to individually. I think we got them all covered. Lots of prayer because that's what unity is built on. So anyone who has a prayer request today, um, we ask that you just give the first name and what the prayer, the desired outcome is. So if someone is looking for its, you know, healing restoration. So, Denise. Rod and Julie healing. And the folks in Florida. And Puerto Rico for that matter. And I hope I'm not using any of your paper up here. These were not for your notes. Okay. <laughs> Just, I grabbed something and was it right? And I'm going to put my brother, Dave, for a wonderful birthday today. And do we have, yes, Susan. Barbara for recovery from hip replacement. Bob for healing. Uh, Kevin. Linda for healing. Aaron and Adira, relationship healing. Sandy. Sandy's brother Dick for healing of his voice. Judy for healing and recovery. I'm just trying to get my attention or is there another one over there? Okay. Am I missing anybody? All right. Susan. Sandy for healing and recovery. Okay, I ask you to join hearts, thoughts, minds, those are thoughts too, um, with me as we extend um, these prayers. Close your eyes or open your hands so that we are all together in, in unity as we do this. Take a brief, deep breath as we join Father, Mother, God. We thank you today for answering all of our prayers, those spoken, those not spoken, those that we've put into our prayer box, those that we speak in our hearts. Especially today, you've heard us voice 
prayers and concerns, we know that there is and will be full healing and restoration for Ron and Julie, for Bob, for Linda. We ask also for healing and recovery of whatever is needed, body, mind, spiritual, for Sandy. Uh, and Judy, we don't only ask it, we affirm it will happen. We know that you are the full restorer for us. We know that Barbara will be walking on that brand new hip, stable, steady, to move on to her next adventure, whatever that may be. We ask for the healing of the relationship of Aaron and Adira. We know that if they are meant to settle with certain understandings, you will open their mind and their discussions to that easily, quickly. We celebrate the birthday of Dave. As he moves on to his next chapter and rotation around the sun. We know that Dick's voice will be restored and he will be able to give a testimony to that sometime very soon. And of course, we keep in mind the people of Florida, South Carolina, Puerto Rico. We ask that they remain safe, safe that the water resides, recedes very quickly so that they can out too, can get into doing what they are meant to do. If for the moment it is just working together and restoring their buildings, their businesses, that's okay. We know that it is divine order and divine timing that all of that will happen. We have been told by humankind that it is hurricane season. We ask that you keep all people safe as they are encountering that. We know that all of this is true, that it will happen through the divine nature of our spiritual teacher and brother. Jesus the Christ. And so it is. Amen. And Russ, would you please come? Oh, well, let's do this. I've never been up here for the first Sunday. Wow. <laughs> but I will ask Russ to do the daily word after this. So October, what does that say? The power of? Hey, I didn't hear any zeal in here though. All right, that's better, zeal. So the inner flame that burns brightly for all to see. And then our disciple is Simon. I don't know what that is. The Canaanite. There we go. Canaanite uh, represents the motivation and the desire to accomplish great things. Yeah, here we go. Same thing on that law of attraction and what we can accomplish, right? And the corresponding color is orange. Oh, I thought it was gold. I didn't look right. What am I doing? I should know better. Um, the location is the back of the head. And let's all, we're going to do this affirmation three times, nice and enthusiastically. <laughs> so I enthusiastically accept my good and go forward to achieve my purpose. I enthusiastically accept my good and go forward to achieve my purpose. I enthusiastically accept my good and go forward to achieve my purpose. Thank you all. Now, Russ, if you would come to the daily word, please. And the word for today is kindness. Kindness is the language of my heart. I set the intention today to give from my heart to show compassion and kindness to everyone I meet. 
I begin by being kind to myself. I take time for spiritual self-care and prior prioritize good nutrition, relaxation, and exercise. I am gentle with myself when I come up short, feeling, filling my self-talk with words of affirmation and compassion. Being kind to myself makes being kind to others easy and natural. I am patient and understanding, and I seek harmony and accord in my relationships. I let the small irritations go, remaining calm and pleasant. I look for ways to lighten the load of others and don't hesitate to offer a helping hand. My kindness helps create, my kindness helps create the kingdom of heaven on earth. From Matthew 25, verse 35, for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. Thank you, Russ. And we have some music with, let's see, we have a whole team here today. We have Julie and Doug and Kevin. I don't even know what they're doing this morning. We are doing <laughs> I Am So Blessed by Special Request, <laughs> written by Karen Drucker. And uh, you can sing along with us. It's pretty straightforward. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. That's line one, three, and four. In between that, I'm so grateful for all that I have. We might say I'm so grateful that all I have that I am as well. And if you brought your instrument, we're doing in the key of C. I'll just take it through once. I so blessed I am so blessed I am so grateful for all that I have I am so blessed I am so blessed I am so grateful I am so blessed I am so blessed I am so blessed I am so grateful for all that I have I am so blessed I am so blessed I am so grateful I am so blessed I am so blessed I am so blessed I am so grateful for all that I have I am so blessed I am so blessed I am so grateful, I am so glad. Mm -hmm. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed. about guest ministers this time we really do have a guest minister we got one traveling in from wherever st augustine today oh boy oh boy you got out maybe just in time <laughs> before the adventure started there hopefully everything's safe for you when you return um so we have uh reverend ron palombo is known for his speaking on the law of attraction he'll be talking to us this afternoon in this uh, as well with the workshop for anybody that still wants to join i'm sure he'll be mentioning something about that and in, in our announcements but for right now we welcome him to the podium for our lesson for the day on that topic
that, thank you. And I really want to thank the music team. I, that, that is a very special song to me. And so thank you so much. And it's kind of a song that really helps us be more aware going on. Oh, that's right. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> It's on. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> well, anyway, thank you, music team. I really appreciate and love that song. I've shared that song with dozens of organizations, not just Unity Churches, but organizations, because that really says it very clearly and succinctly. I'd like to share one of my very favorite stories with you, but I'm going to need some help. Are you guys kind of a helpful group of people here? Oh, I see people nodding and smiling. Yes, this is really good. Okay, I'm going to share a story about this very beautiful, large monastery that basically they had about 40 or 50 monks in this monastery and was always considered a really beautiful, special place, a holy place. And they got a new abbot. The abbot is the head of a monastery. So anyway, this new abbot comes in and uh, as he assumes his abbotship, um, he starts a new tradition. Every morning, the monks would wake up about 5.30ish, go to the chapel and do their morning vespers at six o'clock. And they would do that for a half hour, an hour, or whatever it was. And then they would go to the dining hall for breakfast. And at the head table sat the abbot. And his new tradition was this. He would stand up and sing out to his fellow monks, Good morning. And all the fellow monks had to sing back. Good morning. Kind of a weak vocal fit group, but that's okay. <laughs> we'll work with it. We work with whatever. Okay. So anyway, this new energy, everybody really loved this new energy at first. But you know, some of us have these things called, some of us, all of us have these things called egos. And sometimes our egos kick in, and we have hundreds and hundreds of ego traps. But one of, the, one of the monks was getting more and more frustrated that the routine was changed every morning. And over time and over the weeks, it, he got more and more irritated with this new situation. And so one day the abbot stands up and he sings out, good morning, and all of his monks sing back. Good morning. Oh, you guys got better. <laughs> Except for our frustrated at monk. He sings out, Good evening. The abbot heard the dissonance. He heard the disharmony. And he looks out at his congregation of monks and he says, Someone chanted evening. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why I love that story. How many people here know of or read or heard Eric Butterworth? Yeah, Eric is one of my most beautiful gurus. And um, yeah, Eric and I have a very meaningful connection to me. He doesn't know me at all. Uh, <laughs> but the bottom line, actually, he and I met, but he wouldn't remember. Anyway, the bottom line is, Eric, when he was growing up, he wanted to be an opera singer. Anybody here know that? And so a lot of people that get into ministry, ministry is not what they're thinking about when they're growing up. I could attest to this. Um, I certainly had no thoughts of being a minister, and Eric didn't have thoughts of being a minister, but he became one of the greatest lights in unity for many, many decades. And so um, bottom line is, I love that story because it always reminds me of Eric. He wanted to be an opera singer and he became a unity minister, which was actually his best calling, highest and best calling, but that was. So thank you for playing uh, that little memory thing with me with for our dear brother Eric. But let me ask you a question. Did you ever have disharmony in any areas of your life? And you have discordance. 
Have you ever been so confused you didn't know which way to go? What about, were you ever unsure of which path to go? Have you been overwhelmed with a situation or a coworker or a family member? One of, one of my dear friends, she had um, trepidation about going to her Thanksgiving family gathering because of a particular aunt that always pushed her buttons. And it was really interesting. So we have people that sometimes make things harder than they should be. So dear ones, what we've all been in these situations. So what do we do when we are in situations where we have disharmony, discordance, things are not flowing? How do we deal with that? Well, it's part of our human situation. And basically, I'm going to give you a hint how we deal with it. The first four words of scripture. The Bible tells us how to deal with the first four words. What are the first four words of the Bible? In the beginning. How many is that? Three. So it's the fourth word. In the beginning, God. Let's say that. In the beginning, God. Say it again. In the beginning, God. Don't forget the fourth word. Okay. Every church that I've ever done this with has done that. Every, in the beginning, everybody says it. It's like, maybe I'm not speaking clearly. I don't know. It's all good. But anyway, it's in the beginning, God. That's Genesis 1, chapter 1, verse 1. Now, I want you to know how important it is to go back to basics. Now, you guys here in the great state of Wisconsin must know of Vince Lombardi. Have you ever heard of him? Okay, he, not, he, he had his team not only win four championships, he also won the first two Super Bowls. You all know that. His very first training camp every season, no matter how many years you were playing for him, every season he would start out, he would pick up a football and he would say, gentlemen, this is a football. And then he would talk about the basics of blocking and you know, running and, and, and assignments and things like, he would go right back to basics. Now, you may not know this, but have you ever heard of John Wooten? He's the greatest college basketball coach in history. His team, UCLA, won something like 16 national championships, like 16, one of the greatest of all time. He would start out with, it doesn't keep, no matter how many years you played for him and, and what's how many years scholarship that you have, he would start out by teaching his guys how to put their socks on tight and not have any wrinkles in them. I mean, come on, that's back to basics. Well, that's really the secret to success is taking care of the details. So guess what? Papa Charlie, as you know, Miss Charles Fillmore, people at Uni, used to call, Uni Village in his day used to call him Papa Charlie. He, the co-founder of Unity, he went back to basics with our five principles. We only have five principles in Unity. And the first one, we already affirmed it, well, it's not there anymore, but there's only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God, the good omnipotent. Let's say that. There's only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God, the good omnipotent. I'm so glad we said that together. We all said it, we all affirmed it, but we don't live it. Trust me, we don't live it. We're working on it. We're evolving to get to higher levels of it. And that's what we're talking about today. Our lesson today is called putting God first. Okay. And it's really important for us to understand that we're going to have experiences that we would call challenges in life. And challenges, if you look at the, the history of the word challenge, and I can't, and I, I didn't put it in my notes, but it actually, if you go back to the original thing, it meant opportunity. Oops, wrong one. Opportunity. I'm getting confused with this mic up here. <laughs> okay. It's <laughs> basically a challenge is an opportunity. Why do I say it's an opportunity? Because anything that it seems to prevent you from your good or you from anything higher or anything better is an opportunity to learn and grow. 
Now, there's two different things. Learn is one thing. Grow is totally different than learn. Did you know that? Learn and grow are two different things. Learning, you're acquiring information. Growing, you're doing something with it. You are taking a step out of your former comfort zone, and you are changing your behavior. That is growth. That's evolution. That's growth. That's us moving forward. Learning, we're acquiring information. You know, we've heard some things hundreds and hundreds of times, and we're just gathering information, gathering information, gathering information. It hasn't sunk in deep enough yet for us to change behavior. Eventually, it will. Eventually, we'll get it. But that's just basically how us humankinds are. So we're here to learn and to grow. So to put God first in our lives, the Bible tells us exactly how to do this. In Matthew 6, 33, Jesus clearly says to seek first the kingdom of God, and all things will be added unto you. All things means all good things, okay? So basically, God literally has set us up for total success, okay? We have free will, so we can choose to put God first or to fall into an ego trap. And most of humankind goes through the ego stuff. You know how much drama is going on in, in people's lives and in our world? All the drama is ego-based, pretty much. All drama. If you look at some of the things the countries have gone through and peoples have gone through, and all, it's all ego-driven. And so when you put God first, all of that stuff is going to dissipate and be gone. And that's what we're moving towards. So let's affirm that I put God first in all areas of my life. Let's say that together. I put God first in all areas of my life. And just hold that energy for a moment. Let's say that again and just let it resonate within us after we say it together. I put God first in all areas of my life. When we put God first, we diminish ego's effect on our consciousness. And ego traps create all the drama in our life if we allow it, if we choose it. Who, ha who has control of Ron's life? Ron. Who has control of Julie's life? Yeah, who has control of Matt's life? You, are, you getting the, are you getting a sense of where we're going here? We are in control except your dominion. You know, back in Genesis, God said, I created everything, and I'm giving you, humankind, dominion over everything. I give you dominion over the birds of the air, the cattle of the land, the fish of the deep. And if you go into the metaphysics of what that means, the birds of the air are our fleeting thoughts. The cattle of the land are our habit patterns. The fish of the deep are the stuff that's in our subconscious. We have dominion even over our subconscious thoughts that we don't even know about. That's what our workshop is by today. Oh, by the way, two days ago, I made a startling discovery. For I've been facilitating this workshop for over 30 years throughout the United States and Canada. And two days ago, I came across a tremendous realization. I've been calling this using the Law of Attraction Wisely workshop. It's not. It's using the Law of Attraction Wisely immersion workshop. We, are do, we do more work in our workshop than anything else. If out of the four-hour workshop, you're going to be working probably about two hours of the time. <laughs> when I say working, it's basically getting your consciousness right you'll have information and tools to do that. So anyway, I'll talk about that later on during the announcements. But anyway, we're going to put God first in our life by putting God first above ego. And that is really a tough situation, dear ones. It's a tough situation because we are so steeped with these ego traps. We have almost 
<clears throat> do you know what? Uh, I don't want to use autogenic conditioning. What, what is it? Uh, Pavlov, uh, conditioned response. You know what a conditioned response is? Um, uh, the Pavlov trained a dog. He would ring a bell, give him food. But, so that over time, the, as Pavlov kept ringing the bell and giving the dog food, the dog got to the point where if Pavlov just rang the bell, the dog would salivate. Rang the bell, the dog would salivate. This, this went on. That's, that's, that's the whole background of or the beginning st uh, steps of condition response understanding. So anyway, the bottom line is as we put God first in all areas of our life, we are literally getting into the flow of who we really are and what it's all about and what we're here on Classroom Earth for. A lot of people ask a question, why am I here? Well, I'm going to give you a, a possible answer to that. This is the gospel according to Ron. We're all here to wake up to our true identity. We're all here to wake up to who we really are. That's why we're on Classroom Earth. And that's why we have so many opportunities for growth. We call them challenges, but those are opportunities for growth. Just think, if somebody ruffles your feathers and you could come from a, you choose to put God first, what is God all about? Two definitions, thank you, who said that? Love, absolutely, God is love. One of the definitions that Jesus gave us, the other is God is spirit. So basically, if you put this loving spirit ahead of your ego that wants to get even or you know, do something resentful or do garbage stuff, Basically, if you could come from love, wow, how different would our society look if we came from love instead of control, instead of manipulation, instead of greed, instead of trying to take things from, that don't belong to us. I mean, nations do this. Look what, I don't want to call Putin an idiot, but look what, look what some other countries are doing. They're still invading other countries and trying to all this garbage stuff. It's like crazy. We're evolving in that area too. I don't want to get into that, but the bottom line is even now the whole world is looking and is kind of totally con concerned and upset about what, what that happening. Whereas a hundred years ago, nobody would have even blinked an eye. Nobody would even blink an eye. So we're, we are evolving. We're moving forward. You just have to be patient and understand, you know, it's a, it's a long process to fully wake up to our divinity. So anyway, if we're here to wake up and we're here to understand who we are, my question for us is, who are we? And I also had the answer for us. Basically, this is true for not only me, but for everybody. My truth is, I am Okay, we always start with the I am. Remember, that's the sacred name of God. So be careful what you put after the word am. When you say I am, be careful what you say after that. If you say, oh, I am really bad with computers, guess what? You just predicted how much worse it's going to be. Okay? I'm really bad with cars. Yeah, you're, you're going to be even worse. Keep, 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 keep talking your talk and you'll get worse. So here's the truth. I am a beautiful, beloved, empowered child of God. Let's say that. I am a beautiful, beloved, empowered child of God. Now, just for a moment, I want you to say the word beloved. Beloved. Together. Beloved. Feel the energy of that word. Say it again. Beloved. One more time. Beloved. What is that eliciting inside of you? What are you feeling about that when you say that word? What do you feel? Cradled, Cradled yes. I'm, Warm, yes. Supported, yes. It gives you a sense of 
it, it, there's a sense of peace about there, there's a sense of love, of completion. It's just beloved. Yeah. Now, I want you to not fall into another ego trap and be concerned if the guy next to you is saying beloved and you're saying beloved or vice versa. People do these ego trap things so easily. And that's one of my frustrations. People get upset about how people pronounce different things. Who cares? It's the, the consciousness that we're all about. So don't get into an ego trap separating yourself from anybody else because they pronounce something differently. Does that make sense? And if we are all children of God, you shouldn't really misuse your judgment faculty, which is one of the greatest faculties that we mostly misuse. And you shouldn't be judging anybody anyway, because judgment is not about you judging anybody. Judgment is for Ron to judge what's right for Ron. That's judgment faculty. People misuse it, though, by judging, well, he said this, and he did this, and she did that. Yeah, that's garbage. They're doing their life's journey in their consciousness. You're not here to judge them. Do you think you're the one and only God? Even God doesn't judge us. God just lets us do our thing. God just loves us unconditionally. So anyway, let's go ahead and say our true identity. I am, together, I am a beautiful Beloved, empowered child of God. Let's say that again. I am a beautiful, beloved, empowered child of God. One more time. I am a beautiful, Beloved, empowered child of God. Dear ones, this is the most important thing you could take away from this Sunday lesson today. Knowing your true identity. Now, I'm going to encourage you to say this many times throughout the day. Because all of us have been misprogrammed you know, garbage, all the ego junk that came out over the years. Remember your true identity. I'm going to encourage you to say it several times a day. Now, I want you to know it sounds so simplistic and, oh, yeah, I already know this. Yeah, you know it, you know it at this level. You don't know it at this level. You don't know it at this level yet. You don't know it at this level. And you don't know it to your heart where you start changing your behavior toward yourself and towards others. A dear friend of mine, after, um, after ordination, the first church I had after ordination, because I also had a church before ordination, but the bottom line is the first church I had after ordination, this dear lady, uh, Maria, who was a retired school teacher, her and her husband um, used to come to our classes and, and our, our services. And basically, Maria, after I was at the church for about, oh, maybe a couple of months, Maria came up and said, Ron, you know, I got to tell you something. <laughs> when you first had us repeat, our, and, and this, this is a non and never ending drill. Every Sunday, we would welcome newcomers by telling them their true identity. And I have the whole congregation doing that. And then we would also acknowledge our true identity every Sunday, you know, always because it's part of who we need to know who we are. Well, anyway, Maria said, you know, after uh, you know, after the first couple of times you're having us do this every day, it's kind of like the frustrated monk. Maria was very frustrated with it. She said, I felt like I was back in third grade and I had to repeat after the teacher and I really wanted to slap the, well, I'll use the word daylights out of you, but that's not what she said. <laughs> yeah, I really wanted, I was really upset with you. She, but after about three or four weeks, I started thinking maybe it's true for me. Okay. Now she didn't grow up in unity as probably none of us. How many people here grew up in unity? One. Wow. Congratulations. I'm going to tell you something. This is a true story. I recognized, I didn't know what it was, but I recognize it was about 15 years that I was in unity before I met somebody who actually grew up in here, or maybe 10 years, whatever. And I, as I started meeting a couple of people that grew up in unity, I 
knew there was something different about their consciousness. And I couldn't put my finger on it until much, much, much later. But basically, they don't have to unlearn as much garbage as the rest of us do. I had to unlearn so much garbage. You know, I was taught that I was a miserable sinner. I mean, taught this for 12 years. Miserable sinner, worm of the dust, all this garbage. You know, so it, it was, there was something obviously different about the folks that grew up in unity than people that didn't. And it took me a long time to put it all together. But anyway, bottom line is Maria said after about four, four or five weeks, whatever, I was starting to think maybe it's true for me. And then she said, Ron, another several weeks later, I started really getting a glimpse that this is who I am. I just didn't know it. And so the bottom line is, it sounds simple, but I'm going to encourage you to please, please use that affirmation frequently, because I can guarantee you, you're not going to get it the first time you say it. Well, maybe you will, Russ, but everybody else, we're still working on it. <laughs> it's all good. And I want to tell you, today's daily word was so empowering. I'm going to invite us. This is really what we're all about. Jesus said to always come from love. He only gave us one commandment out of all the wisdom this guy knew. One commandment. And that was to always come from what? Love. Always come from love. And this encapsulated so well. I'm going to invite us to do um, this affirmation. Kindness is the language of my heart. Let's say that. Kindness is the language of my heart. Hmm. Today, I give from my heart. Together? Today, I give from my heart. I show compassion and kindness to everyone I meet. I show compassion and kindness to everyone I meet. Dear ones, this is really putting God first at a very, very high level. And I'm going to couple this with making your affirmation, your true identity affirmation, part of your daily routine. I am a beautiful, together, I am a beautiful, beloved, empowered child of God. Now, let me tell you what's going to happen when you do this affirmation. Over a period of time, and it will be over a period of time, it won't happen immediately, you're going to start being more loving toward yourself, more forgiving toward yourself. I remember when I first got it, I was doing something that I wasn't supposed to be doing. I was working on losing some excess weight, and what happened was, I wasn't, you know, I was only supposed to have no more than seconds because I, I used, sometimes I used to have a lot more than seconds and I wasn't supposed to eat after a certain hour. Well, here it is like three hours later, I was ready for a snack and I went to the refrigerator and I'm, I rarely do desserts, but there was this delicious looking pie. I took it out and I, and I'm eat, I'm halfway through the pie and I thought, oh shoot, I'm not supposed to be doing this after like nine o'clock or whatever here it is here it is like 12 30 in the morning you know and i'm thinking oh shoot so i i couldn't believe this i forgave myself i finished eating the pie and i enjoyed it guilt free <laughs> guilt free so this stuff works i'm gonna tell you it really works because i was actually trained to beat myself up you know a lot of us have the self-talk where you really beat yourself up when you do something wrong that you consider wrong well, I forgave myself, which was, I was like, wow, that's different. But anyway, let me tell you what happens, though. You keep doing it beyond that. Every day, I'm a beautiful, beloved, empowered child of God. And then pretty soon, you're going to know who everybody else is. Everybody. I'm going to know you're a beautiful, beloved child of God. And I'm going to treat you that way. It's going to happen. I promise you. You will see everybody as your sister and your brother. You know, it's amazing. And what I had told um, several congregations, as our world wakes up to their truth, their true identity, there will be no more wars. There will be no more taking one nation, trying to take another nation, or people even manipulating other people. Dear ones, this is really the solution to our global crisis. 
which is the next book I'm writing, by the way, we are in a global crisis now, and it's probably more obvious now to everybody than it has ever been. I've been aware of it for about 30 years, and I've been talking about our global crisis because nobody knows their true identity. And that's why we have so much garbage going on out there. Yeah, so the bottom line is know who you are and live from that awareness. So now one of the things that I do, <clears throat> besides running over on my lesson talks, well, actually, nobody gave me a time limit. See, when I, in my congregation, our service, everybody knew our service ran about an hour and 15 minutes. Everybody was cool with that. Well, some people may not have been, but they didn't tell me. <laughs> they didn't tell me. It's okay. <laughs> anyway, bottom line is um, I have what I call OHOs. O-H-O, capital O, capital H, capital O. And OHO is an optional homework opportunity. Okay? And here's what it's all about. I'm going to invite you to say your true identity several times every day. Now, if you forget it, be patient with yourself. Remember, you're, you're acquiring a new habit pattern. Don't beat yourself up. Be gentle with yourself. You're God's beautiful, beloved child. Remember that. You are God's beautiful. Let's say that. I am God's beautiful, beloved child. Together. I am God's beautiful, beloved child. So be kind to yourself. God wants you to be kind to yourself. God wants you to love yourself. So don't beat yourself up if, you know, when, when we fall short of our divine potential. We're, we're on a journey. It's all part of our evolutionary process. Okay, so anyway, it sounds simple, but I guarantee you it will change your consciousness. Stick with it. I am a beautiful, beloved, empowered child of God. Let's say that. I am a beautiful, beloved, empowered child of God. And if you want to go one step higher, I invite you to take any one situation in your life or relationship in your life and to come from a higher, what was that word? higher level of love than ever before. What was the word? Higher. higher. That means something above where you've been. You're going to take another step outside of your comfort zone. What do you think of that? Is that a, is that a way to learn and grow? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so let's get comfortable in our seats. I invite you to take everything off your lap. And let's just be aware of this amazing divine presence that's all around us. Just relax in this beautiful energy field of love. And that's what our divine presence really is. It's a presence of love. Just relax in it, breathe it in. And as you inhale this divine love, it interacts with the divine love that's already within us. Because remember, God made us and he called us all very good. Humankind is very good. We just are lost a lot of the times and that's why we have so much drama in the world. But we're waking up slowly. We're in the process of waking up. So we inhale divine energy, exhale divine energy. We are in a sea divine energy. I invite us to take a gentle, deeper inhalation and hold it for a few seconds. And as we're ready, just gently exhale. Just let's relax in the silence for a few moments, knowing that we are God's beloved. We are one with this divine presence. Relaxing in this divine energy field. 
I open my mind. I open my heart. I open my entire being to this beautiful divine energy all around me and within me. I am the radiant life of God. I am a pure and perfect channel of God's love and God's light. I am a blessing to all I meet today, all I encounter today. I acknowledge the divine in me. I acknowledge the divine in all others. Even though spoken silently in my mind, I will say, I bless you. I love you. So thank you, sweet spirit, for your loving presence, guiding and blessing me this day and all days. And so it is. Amen. <clears throat> I didn't get an itinerary. I'm not sure what's next. Love uh, the love offering. Oh, beautiful. All right. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. At this point, I invite us to take our love offerings and our tithes in our hands. And we're going we're gonna to step a little bit outside of the normal. So be patient with me. And don't get frustrated over any changes I might make. <laughs> I'm only here for two Sundays, so be good. Be kind. <laughs> okay. So... <clears throat> With your tithes and love offerings in your hands, I'm going to invite you to bring to mind a wonderful blessing in your life. A person, place, or a thing, it doesn't matter, but just bring a blessing to mind. And now feel the gratitude just welling up from inside. And now from this energy field of coming from gratitude, we are now going to do my favorite love offering blessing, which is, I give in love because I am blessed by love. Together, I give in love because I am blessed by love. And now let's say our affirmation one more time. I give in love because I am blessed by love. There's an infinite supply of love in this world. It's in God, it's in you, it's in me. And it's free to everyone, like a river to the sun. And it's shining here. There's an infinite supply of love in this world. It's in God, it's in you, it's 
in me And it's free to everyone Like a river from the sun And it's shining here For all to see There's an infinite supply of love in this world. It's in you, God. It's in you. It's in me. And it's free to everyone, like a river from the sun. And it's shining here for all to see. Supply. There's an infinite supply. There's an infinite supply of So, so we're in the camera. Okay. okay. We bless these gifts of love coming from hearts and hands of love to bless God's ministry of love at Unity Center. And we're going to all do our final blessing together, which is, just repeat after me, thank you, God. Thank you, God. For your unceasing. For your unceasing. Ever increasing. Ever increasing. Flow of absolute good flow of absolute good into our lives now into our lives now thank you sweet spirit thank you sweet spirit and so it is and so it is thank you Yeah, I get this one. Okay, announcements, I know. Who wants to give the announcements? Somebody else want to do this? Okay. <laughs> That's pretty good, okay. All right. Well, if you like what you heard this week, or if you didn't, come back next week and hear Ron again. <laughs> Maybe he'll give us something different that you could take away from that one, right? Uh, I'm sure there will be. So we're glad to have you here. Thank you. And there's a new book starting this week. So if you haven't been part of the book discussion, now would be a good time to jump in. Although I understand you can jump in any week um, that you're available. Um, Thursdays from 9.30 to 11, either right here in the chapel or virtually on uh, Zoom. And those who just so you don't so that you know, even if you don't have Zoom or don't know how to use it, there is a phone number you can call in so you can still be part of it. So, and again, that's from 9.30 to 11 on Thursdays. Right after that, there is the Silent Unity Prayer Service. Again, here or stay on the Zoom. You can even jump in just for the prayer service if you like. It's like 15, 20 minutes out of your day on Thursday. It's not, and then we've got a nice script. You just follow it. You can listen in, it doesn't matter. And again, a way, an additional way to pray with your spiritual family. And it's the same thing that they do at the village as well. Uh, Course in Miracles, I don't think is going to be held today because of the workshop, right? There you are. Okay, that's correct. But normally it's at 1145 in the fireside room. Um, 
A Course in Miracles is a is miracle minded thinking to focus on the principles of universal love and forgiveness. Again, more of getting what you want um, through our thoughts and prayers. And of course, we've got our website and we've got a bulletin board, inspiring messages, former services. If you want to hear this one again, it's going to be up there this afternoon. Um, so when you go home, you're welcome to do that. Get those affirmations in your mind, in your thoughts. Keep going with them so we can keep you can keep hearing those again and again and again and start to live them and believe them. Um, Life Journey Groups, the second and fourth Monday of the month. So that'll be next week. Bring yourself, bring an open mind, bring a warm heart. And of course, like I said, yourself as part of it. And again, have some discussion with fellow Unity members. Volunteers are always needed to keep us going. And it's what's keeping this center going, regardless of there's a minister here. We are Unity Center Milwaukee. Any little thing, you might think it's this big, it doesn't matter. You might think it's this big. If there's something that you think you can provide for this center, talk to Diane. And she's not here this week, and that's okay. She's be there next week, or email her and tell her, hey, you know, I can, I can pour water for folks. I can water the plants, I can cut the grass. Even if it's just once, it's okay. Um, you know, we're, we're winding down the end of the season for the flowers, so that we need to cut that back, cut those down and, and get the gardens ready for next year. Um, greeters, kitchen help, uh, any of that kind of stuff. Keeping this place clean, vacuuming the chapel once in a while for us, anything, anything you can possibly do, um, you're welcome to do it once a month, once a week, once, once a year, it doesn't matter. I'm sure they'll find something for you. Uh, and after we get a potluck today, for those who did not know, uh, you are welcome to stay whether you brought something or not. This is a sharing family. We want you to be a part of it. Um, have a chat about what we were talking about in the service today. Um, and there is a workshop. Is this the last one, Matt? Or is there more to follow? All right. And I will let Reverend Ron talk about his workshop then and what is being offered over the next two weeks, basically. Basically, our, our workshop is no longer workshop. It is now an immersion workshop because uh, two days ago I discovered that I've been sending these things out to churches and they don't have a concept of how intense the workshop is. And by intense, I mean how interactive and how, um, how much stuff we do. We do several processes that literally change your life. People who have taken this workshop, now remember I've been doing this for a lot of years and uh, way before we had internet. And so I literally have a file storage box full of unsolicited testimonials from people who took the workshop over the years. And um, basically they talk about their physical healings, relationship healings, have gotten more work, have gotten better jobs. Uh, most of the uh, unsolicited testimonials are about an increased income. And the reason is when you focus your energy in your work performance generally goes up, and when your work performance goes up, your income generally goes up. And I've had several people that were on the verge of getting out of their businesses that have that the whole things have turned around and they took off like rockets and all that stuff. Anyway, so the bottom line is if there's any area of life that you'd like to have um, a better experience, it will definitely raise your consciousness. I can guarantee you that based on the tons of feedback I've gotten over the years, I'm going to invite you to jump into our workshop. It's going to be from one to five today. It's a four hour workshop and it goes by fast. The la one of the things I did in another state, an attorney actually came up to me afterwards. He said he was shocked when I was closing the workshop down. He had no idea four hours went by. It doesn't feel like four hours, not even to me. So anyway, bottom line is um, the workshop will be this afternoon. If you have other plans, I'm just going to invite you to cancel those plans and come to the workshop. <laughs> Okay. Now, if, oh, and I should, I didn't even bring it. Um, if you really can't make it, 
I've had several attendees <laughs> I'm here in spirit. This is a true story. The first 10 years I was doing this workshop, people used to ask me, do you have a book? Well, I was living in Sacramento at the time. I was doing, I was doing several programs in the state of Florida, and it was at the very large church in St. Petersburg. Um, about the fourth guy in the line, after the workshop, there's always generally a lot of people that talk. Some people could talk to me afterwards. This, about the fourth guy in the line says, where can I buy your book? From that point on, oh, and the second last person in the line, about literally about 10 minutes later, the second last person in the line comes up and she says, where can I buy your book? From that point on, nobody ever asked me, do you have a book again? This is a true story. Everybody said, where can I buy your book? In fact, when the first guy said that, what I said to myself, I'll, I'll rephrase it for you guys. Oh, heck. <laughs> I've got to write this darn book. <laughs> I didn't want to write a book. I know, I know that it takes a total different discipline but because of those folks and people for the next 10 years kept saying, where can I buy your book? I finally sat down, wrote the book. It's the entire workshop in print. The only thing you can't do is the experiential stuff that we do. Um, but the bottom line is everything, all the, all the tools and techniques that we share that cause healing situations, relationship healings, physical healings, all of that stuff is in here with very concise instructions. So if you really can't make it today, you're welcome to see me afterwards and, and you can get, get a copy of our book. Uh, with tax tag and title, it's only $15 for the whole thing. So anyway, that's another option. And for those of you that are interested, um, I was actually toying with doing something new here. Um, I was thinking of at letting people come for the last day of the part two of the workshop, which is Wednesday, because we do a healing thing. And I thought that's not really going to be fair to anybody who comes in because we're going to be doing the last part of the workshop plus the healing part. So next Sunday, I'm just offering on a love offering basis, anybody who wants to do the healing thing, I, I'll teach several different ways that you can direct healing energy to yourself or to loved ones for healing. Um, and then we actually do a healing experience where everybody has a chance to sit in what I call the sweet seat and everybody directs energy to that person. So that'll be next Sunday, right after our service. So just, I'm just opening that up to everybody and it's on a love offering basis. So everybody could come. Yes, sir. It's a love offering basis. So everybody could attend. Everybody could attend. Okay. So, um, and actually, I'm going to tell you what my goal is. I'm going to try, and I, I've been talking about it for two months. It takes me a while to get to where I actually take the action. I get the inspiration. I pray about it. I, my goal is to get funding so I could do the entire workshop and the part two of the workshop on a love offering basis. In other words, if somebody only has $5, they could jump into the workshop. I have to get funding, though, because this is actually supporting not only me, but I actually have the ministry that does this is called the Center of Divine Awareness. So it's like, I, I really have to, you know, you know how you know how economics work. So if I can get funding, I'm going to eventually have this workshop on a love offering basis. And so everybody could take it because it really changes the consciousness of people. They have an improved life. In fact, I've had a guarantee for over 35 years and it is do the work. And this is the work that we started in the workshop. Do the work, your life improves, there are no exceptions. And I've seen that time and time again. So anyway, that's it. Bless you. And now we guess we do the uh, peace song. Yeah, let's, let's go right to the peace song and then our prayer protection. I know there, there's a, there is no lead on that song, folks. So when it goes, it goes. So let's gather up in a circle if as you feel comfortable or stay in the pew, whatever is comfortable for you. You know, again, if we can face out into the universe, 
and let our love and peace go into the community, out into the world. Let me make a suggestion. Here's how we do it at oh. Unity Village. Every, if you all, this, this is the center aisle. Everybody face the center aisle. So we'll literally be sending blessings to each side of the room. Ooh, I like that one even better. So, so let's go ahead okay. and, and do that. Instead of our circles, that sounds good. All right, let's do that one. And it's all good. Whatever works. And it's all good. All right, sounds good, Matt. Okay. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is wonderful. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God.